Hey everyone, I'm Steven and this is Chip and we're with Scenes in Nature. And a while back, we showed you how to use the Static King in our antler velvet kits to create a white tail in velvet. And today we're gonna do that same thing, but we're gonna go ahead and add some additional techniques that'll make it look even more realistic. Uh, we are. If you have a set come, that comes in in velvet, of course, we have to get that off. And really the best way I found to do that is just use a pressure washer on them. Right, and then before you move on the next step, which is gonna be applying epoxy, be sure to let that dry. Right, right. And the epoxy step, what I like to do here is to build up the, the tines, you know, on the main beams and give them this kind of a clubby, uh, bulbous look on here. This is pretty natural in what a, a, a set of antlers look like when they are in velvet. This is also a time that you can do any repairs to your antlers. Uh, this particular set was all chewed up. I, I added a tine back on it and I fixed an eye guard and some other squirrel chews on here. Right, so you can add a tine if you want. You can add a lot of tines if you want, actually. Uh, you can put drop tines on here, anything you want. That's why all the deer in your house look big. That's exactly <laughs> it. You give me enough epoxy and I can make a spike into a burning crop. Right. <laughs> And so, now there's an additional technique that's really cool too. Why don't you tell them about that one? There is. This is really really kind of a neat thing. And this was shown to us by a good friend of ours here at Scenes of Nature's, uh, Bob Hutch Hutchison up at Hutch's Taxidermy in Pennsylvania. And when he does his velvet sets, he puts this webbing in right here between the tine and the main beam. This is a really cool touch. And uh, we thanks to Hutch for showing us that. Right. And you always see that in nature. So it really helps to add that realistic um, look to the antlers. We do. Yeah, look at pictures and you'll see this on, on so many velvet sets. Now you have your bulbous ends built up and you have that awesome webbing put in there, you're ready to move on to the next step, which is going to be applying our velvet base. Now this is a paint that's going to go on, it's going to act as kind of a primer, as well as give you that nice skin color if your velvet's a little thin in areas. And so one thing that's awesome about this is that you can either just brush it on, kind of like you see Chip doing, or you can thin it down and run it through your airbrush. You know, they both work pretty well, but uh, I actually like to just use it straight out of the jar. Uh, it's, it's very thick and it covers nicely and it also dries pretty fast. I'm just going to check it over for spots I may have missed, like right there, and I think we're good. Now we just got to let it dry. Let it dry. All right, Chip, now that the velvet base is dry, why don't you tell us what you did there with those points? Well, uh, obviously I painted the other antler. After that, I took my airbrush and I darkened the, the tips and kind of faded it back onto the main beam and onto the tines. This is kind of a cool effect you could do. It's, it's very easy to do. And it's gonna make your antlers look even more natural because if you look at you know real deer and velvet, quite often the end of those uh, growing velvet tips is black or dark. Right, yeah, it's gonna look great. I can't wait to see it. Um, and so now that we kind of talked about those, I think we're ready to move on to, our, to the glue stage, which we're gonna use our fiber tack, right? We are. Uh, FiberTac's great. It's a very good adhesive. This is what we use also when we put down all of our moss effects. It's a very strong glue. It also gives me lots of work time. So I should be able to get this whole side done with no problem. Right. And you're just going to use that brush just to go ahead and start applying that? I am. Absolutely. Great. And while he's doing that, I'm going to go and grab the Static King and I'm just going to help him out. I'm going to fill that for him. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you're using the Static King uh, for, for velvet um, is that you're going to use that lighter color first. And so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that, pull the sieve off, and I'm going to throw that down in there. If you were doing this in your shop, you'd want to go ahead and fill your Static King before you start applying your adhesive. But since we're working together, I just thought I'd help him out. If you notice, I'm putting this glue on very heavy and it's kind of thick and white and shiny. Don't worry about any of that. This is going to dry to a nice flat finish and it's going to be clear also. Today I'm only I'm going to do this one antler uh, completely. I actually like to do that. I like to do one antler at a time. That way I'm not pressed for time as far as uh, getting my fibers on before the glue dries. And another great idea is if you're doing a big set like a, an elk or a caribou is to do those in sections because they are so large. True. Also, if I'm working on a big set of antlers like an elk or a caribou, I'll typically put it on a mounting stand. All right, Chip, so kind of while you're finishing up here, why don't you tell us another really cool thing or some of the other cool things about FiberTech? The, the great thing about this is this is actually formulated to hold the fibers. Um, uh, it works It works so much better than, than just a regular glue because it actually forms around each individual fiber and keeps it standing up. Right, and another thing that's really awesome about it is that it's got a little bit of flexibility when it's dry because you know customers are going to want to touch it. And so when they're touching that dried velvet um, in their home or something, you don't want it to, to be brittle and break and fall off. And so there's a little bit of flexibility to it as well. 
Okay, so now that our glue's on there, we gotta kind of get working on this so we can't take too long. But um, Chip, if you can, kind of explain what we're doing as we're going here. Okay, one thing if you notice, I'm gonna, as I turn this over, I'm gonna flip on my static king and I'm gonna try to keep this about three inches from the antler. Also, notice that wire that's attached there. That's my uh, ground wire. That's really important that you have that in there. That's what makes this whole thing work. When I do these, I like to start at the base and work out towards the tips of the antlers. Um, I think it works better. I'm gonna put this on pretty heavy. As I get out towards these, end of these tips that I painted black, I'm actually gonna put my fibers on much thinner because I want that black to show through. And one thing to note, you'll notice there's fibers falling down on the table. That's okay, because you can sweep those up, you can save them for reuse. So make sure that you're working in a nice clean area when you're doing this. Another thing to note is um, there's actually two different lengths of fibers, and that's another thing that's important about doing that lighter color first, like Chip said, um, because it'll allow those shorter, darker fibers to kind of fall down between there. So it'll fill in a little bit of any bare spots, also kind of create some natural shadows. Okay, this is actually, I think, pretty good. I like it, I think we're good. Great. Okay, so now that we're done with that lighter fiber, we're ready to move on to that dark one. So Chip's gonna go and get working on it. And one thing you'll notice is we didn't let that glue dry. We started right away, so we went ahead and jumped in there. We cheated and just grabbed another Static King, but of course you would just go ahead and fill, it, fill your Static King up with that a second color. Now, if you notice on this one, I'm actually doing it the opposite of what I did before. With the darker fibers, I like to start at the tips and actually work down the main beams toward the burr. This allows me to kind of uh, almost shade my antlers a little bit with a darker color, because I want them to be darker out here on the ends. And I won't use nearly as much of this either. And I think that's it. It's gonna be good to go. Great, it really is that easy. It looks great already. Of course, it'll look even better after that glue gets dried. Right, the dark tips are gonna show a lot more than they do now, and that, that's gonna really give it a cool look. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a deer, so I think that's a plus. It does, and uh, this is always the easy one. This is gonna be the hard one, because not only does that look like a deer, it has to look like this one, so. Uh, <laughs> right, you don't want two different deer on the same yeah. head? <laughs> we'll see if I can pull it off. Right. Well, for you guys, we really appreciate you watching the video. Of course, you know, for more product knowledge, um, more how-to videos, you know, like us on Facebook, um, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Instagram, all of those things. Um, and of course, like I said, for product knowledge and more how-to videos, go to scenesinnature.com. Thanks so much for watching.